before I tell you about a piece of research that I'm involved with, I'd, I'd like to say, because it came up over lunch with someone I was sitting next to, the mortality when I started in breast cancer, when Larry was my first fellow, I have to get that out. Uh, he's, was, a, he's actually 20 years older than I am. Right? <laughs> Look for yourself. At any rate, <laughs> at, at any rate, um, in those days, the mortality for breast cancer was 50%. Half the women we saw died of the disease. And today, today, four out of five women diagnosed with breast cancer will be cured of the disease. That's remarkable. And I want to say, growing up in an era that included such heroes for me as Nina Hyde and Rose Kushner, and now having heroines uh, like Evelyn, it's no, no doubt whatsoever that the women sitting in this room, you are responsible for that, and you should take every bit of credit for it. So one of the nice things about the BCRF is that it lets you take chances, and though I am an, an old dog, as Larry just told you, I've actually embarked on something this past year, which is a completely novel project that builds a bit on what uh, we've already heard from Arnie Levine. We know that breast cancer is caused when genes go bad. They go bad either because they push a cancer or bad because they remove breaks that keep cancers from, keep cells from, uh, keep them normal. And finding out what those genes are is, is really quite essential. Even, for example, the BRCA, the BRCA genes, that one gene will not cause a breast cancer. All of you have heard of HER2 or ERB2 that's treated with uh, trastuzumab or Herceptin, but that one gene alone will not cause breast cancer, though we can use it as a target for a therapy. We know that non-invasive breast cancer, DCIS, commonly, 60 or 70% of the time, has this one gene turned on, and yet a woman does not have full-blown breast cancer. So other genes have got to be involved. How will we find them? With a truly fabulous uh, student working in my laboratory, we decided to figure out a way to go at this. The way I think of it schematically is I think of the cancer as behind a door. And when the door is opened, the cancer can come out. Stupid, but it works as an idea. Imagine that there are three locks on the door. And one of them, for example, is BRCA, or one of them is her 2 new. But how are you gonna figure out what is the gene that unlocks the door, the next gene that's involved? So what we did was develop a library that could, in fact, investigate every single gene you've got. Imagine that if there are 25,000 genes, we had 25,000 different keys. And painstakingly, we tried each key one by one in that lock. Will it open the door or won't it? And we had a way of finding out when the door was open because we could get the tumors. And we have done that, and to our enormous pleasure, in a very high-risk experiment, we have now identified at least five brand new tumor suppressor genes, exactly like the P53 gene that you heard about from Arnie Levine. Because in funds that the, uh, that the BCRF has found, given to other investigators, there are now databases where we can almost instantly look and see whether or not a key that we think is right could be contributing to other genes, we've been able to do that, and we're right, we're right about this. So that we're very excited about this ability to have now found a handful of new genes which unquestionably, in our minds at least, although we could be demented, uh, in our minds at least are contributing to breast cancer. This is entirely through the BCRF, and, and we couldn't be more excited. And uh, God willing, we'll have something to do about them in another year or two. Thanks a lot. <laughs>